Whether it's five a day or eat the rainbow, fruits and vegetables are the base of any healthy diet. But when past their prime, they get rejected and become part of our food waste problem. So we're on a mission. Are ugly fruits and vegetables just as good to eat? Our two zero waste newbies will put it to the test. I'm Isaac Henry, and I'm leading ordinary people on a zero waste journey to pick up hacks on how to cut down food waste. Got it. Zero waste cook-off start now. And compete in a cooking competition. Oh, it's very bad. To try and transform these into these. I won't waste it. A mother of two young children, Shuhao runs a home business selling vegetable purees and sugar-free bakes, inspired by what she feeds her own kids. What do you look for when you go buy fruits and vegetables from the supermarket? I really do try and pick the nicest ones because if there's this huge array and I pay the same price, why would I buy one that is bruised and squishy? So what is your impression of ugly vegetables and fruits? So I usually try to avoid them. If I do find something, it's only for my personal use. Because my customers deserve the best, and um, my children and my family deserves the best. So I, I... But you don't deserve the best. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> my next Zero Waste newbie is Joe, a master's student from the south of Italy. What are you making? Gnocchi alla Sorrentina. My grandmother used to make it very often. With this uh, pandemic and working from home, I got a lot of time to rediscover my passion for cooking. Speaking about time, I don't think these fruits have a lot of time left. I'm very interested to find out uh, what's in the fridge. No, no, uh, it's, Let's it's, go. it's fine, it's fine. It's... I don't think these are fresh. I usually try to buy food once a week and I have my food journal to plan uh, what I want to cook. But sometimes what happens is that almost ready to cook those vegetables and your friend uh, sends you a message, let's go out and eat somewhere. And you know, just like two, three times, I, I forget that I bought so much stuff. How can Joe and Xu Hao learn to see the beauty of ugly fruits and vegetables? I'm kickstarting their zero waste journey by meeting food rescuer Daniel Tay. This is Mobile KB, it's a Kampong Bishan activity. Every Tuesday evening, we fill our community van with rescued vegetables and fruits, and we drive down to three to four locations in Singapore and we give away for free. Mobile KB gets all these from Fridge Restock Community SG a group that saves at least 3,000 kilograms of ingredients weekly. Food that's bound for the bin because people aren't buying them. This looks perfectly fine. Yeah, that's what rescue food sometimes looks like. Too big or too small for their packing requirements. It doesn't mean that the food cannot be eaten. It just means that the food does not match some of their cosmetic standards or some of their packing standards, so they end up being thrown away. Leafy greens and soft fruits that don't store well are often the first to go. This one is very damaged and it's very soft already. This whole lot of kiwis is here because they are overripe. You would take out the parts that are soft, cut, away, cut them away, but the rest you can feel it's still quite hard and that part can still be eaten. But you have to be mindful, if the skin is broken, normally I would just throw it away because you don't know what you have gotten in. I don't even know what is this. What is this? Kangkong. Kangkong. <laughs> Can this be eaten or you would uh, throw it away? But the part that's still green, I would still eat. Ah. Yeah. That, that's a just general good rule of thumb. It's, it's black, it's probably spot already. Yeah. You can salvage maybe about 60% of this. Yeah. You don't have to throw away that 60% of food. I'm going to do a slice test. Take a good one and a rescued one, slice them open, and see what we have inside. So that is the good one, right? That is yeah. the good one. They are a little bit of soft parts. However, they both look pretty good. No?
All right, let's check out the bad one now. Starting good. It looks the same. Oh, wow. Wow. Come on, I can't even tell the difference. Somehow. No. I'm a little bit less skeptic now, but still, still the taste. As a food lover and okay, avid home around. cook, can Joe taste time. the difference between beauty and the beast? This is the good one, and this is the bad one. Let's give it a shot. Here you go. Let's try this one. Difficult, but if I have to guess, I would say the first one, because of the texture, was, was different. Uh... You did get it right. Well done. So, Shuhan, would you like to give it a try? I, I don't think I want to try it yet because I saw that it was really squishy and um, like this part is all loose and discoloured. Still a skeptic? Yes. How about if we give it one more test? Okay. So, let's have science decide whether ugly fruits and vegetables are just as good. What happens when we test the pretty and the blemished, side by side, using science? We head to Nanyang Polytechnic to meet food safety expert Richard to get some answers. Hi, I've got some really interesting produce that came from the same batch. Y'all have actually picked a very good samples of fruits and vegetables because this grows easily. Richard wastes no time in putting us to work. We cut out the spoiled parts first. That was very mushy. So this is the so-called bad banana. So what about the, the cracks? Usually this is also a concern. Well, we'll put this to test, but we'll try to cut away the, the crack part. To find out if ugly produce are just as nutritious and fall. safe for consumption, we test the vitamin C levels in the apples and bananas, potassium levels in the bananas, and the bacterial count. Three days later, we're back for the results. According to the Singapore Food Agency, food with an Enterobacteriaceae count below 10,000 is safe for consumption. So for the good cabbage, the count is just 95 Enterobacteriaceae count. You were really worried about the cracked cabbage, yeah. right? Uh, whether the, there will be more bacteria. How I think it's going to be at least 10 times higher. Well, it's far so, below. It's just 120. Do you know that the banana test came out? All of them are lower than 10 count. We did not actually detect any Enterobacteriaceae from the banana. That is amazing. Yes. Completely edible. Completely edible. You know why? Because the banana skin has protected the banana. So even the banana was mushy inside, Actually, there was no bacteria. For the good apples, again, we didn't detect any Enterobacteriaceae. So for the bruised one, slightly a little bit, we have 40 counts. Again, it is protected by the apple skin. What about the potassium levels of the bananas? Richard compares the readings side by side. Do you see any difference? No, actually, you can barely see it. Yeah, <laughs> same. The reading Are you also... lying? No, I'm not. I so, feel like it didn't move, nothing yeah, moved. Like, yeah, so that shows that the potassium content of the banana is still the same, okay, or about the same. Wow, that's wow. really cool. Amazing. Yes. It's something that I never would have expected. To test for vitamin C, iodine is added to the apple and banana samples to achieve a color change. The amount of iodine needed actually reflects the amount of vitamin C present. And surprise, surprise! we discover the amount of iodine used is the same for both the good and the ugly. So that answer your very first questions that you came in to me. Are ugly fruits and vegetables just as good? They are. <laughs> <laughs> Armed with a newfound respect for the ugly, Xu Hao and Zhou are ready to learn ways to prepare them at an eatery with a mission. This place is called Practice Tuck Shop. 
which um, invites home chefs like yourself, uh, professional chefs, artists, and um, we use uh, rescued produce, fruits and vegetables to cook. I will import quick pickling methods that can be used on a variety of ugly produce. While Chef Brazil demonstrates two dishes that feature rescued pumpkin because of its versatility. We're going to make a stuffed pumpkin with rice. As you can see, it's got this little spot here which it has been sitting on the soil. Sometimes it can be deemed as ugly. First, we empty them out. While they bake, we prepare the rice stuffing. Dice any ugly or nearly expired fruits and vegetables lying around and mix them in. Chef Priscilla wastes nothing, as the soup stock is also made with vegetable peels and scraps. So now what we need to do is to fill up with the rice that's already cooked. So next we'll be doing an Asian pumpkin kueh. It's super, super easy. Blend cooked pumpkin with coconut milk and seasonings. Then slowly add rice flour and atta flour to the mix before baking for 30 minutes. You can replace this actually with sweet potato. Do you know purple sweet potato? It's gorgeous. Um, tapioca as well. Then it's my turn to share some zero waste acts. We're going to get started with quick pickling methods. It's the best way to prolong shelf lives for all these products. We'll start with a uh, wing bean. So can I just use all of it or uh, do I cut away the brown bits? I would not trim them away because they're not rotting. I'm using white distilled vinegar as my pickling base. Depending on whether you like it sweet or savoury, use sea salt or sugar accordingly. For that extra punch, throw in some black peppercorns, ginger, kombu or even Szechuan peppercorns. Now it's tasting time, guys. Are you ready? Are you excited? Very excited. Oh, I'm pretty excited too. We're going to taste the pickles first. We're starting off with the apple and black pepper, if you remember this. Go ahead. Help yourselves out. Could have been more generous with the portion, but okay. <laughs> Just enjoy your one piece. <laughs> it, it's sweeter than I thought it would be, and the apple is still really crispy. And I love the back taste of the black pepper. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to do the pear and ginger. Mm. Oh, mm. Mm. this is really good. Mm. This is my favorite. Cheers. Mm, it's really good. It smells really good. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I love it. And, and it's so flavorful even though you didn't add any salt. Chef Priscilla showing us how many different things you can make out of one ingredient made me think that I should find some product which uh, represents me and uh, my story, my, where I come from. My mindset is definitely more open towards using ugly produce for the cooking competition. But I'm excited to go home and start experimenting for my family. Practicing um, my dishes for the competition. These are the veggie scraps that I have been saving. I'm still a little bit apprehensive because it looks like rubbish water. Eh? The taste is not so bad. I would be using this to cook um, maybe porridges or things for my baby. So, yeah, so scrap vegetable stock totally works. How does it taste? We take everything left and we just, instead of throwing it in the bin, we throw it in the pan. So, we 
take this and it doesn't go in here, it will go in here. It's been quite a journey, guys, but we are finally in our zero waste kitchen. Together with Chef Brazil, we will be judging your cooking using ugly fruits and vegetables. Look over there for your mystery ingredients. Are you guys ready? Because your zero waste cook off starts now! Our judging criteria. First, the number of ugly produce utilized. Second, the amount of waste generated during the cooking. I need that. Third, the taste, of course. To push their creativity, we're giving them two hours to produce at least one dish. There were a lot of Asian products, but I'm used to cook with more uh, traditional, simple products. Uh, so I literally had to change everything uh, last minute. What ugly produce are you using? I'm using uh, the carrots as a main base for, uh, I'm gonna do some pasta that is just flour and uh, carrots. Joe is tapping into his Italian roots. He's making gnocchi with carrots, but with an Asian twist. A cream of broccoli with hints of coconut. Hi, Shu Hao. How is it going? Um, what did you take? I took the purple sweet potatoes. Okay. I took an apple, the red cabbage. You also yeah. have this. Yeah. You took from the pile, apple. Yes. yes. It's not bad, actually. And the spring onion. Most of what you took were from the ugly vegetable pile. Proud of you, pretty good, well done. Thank you. I'm starting off with the purple sweet potato kueh salad right now. Ooh. During uh, the cooking, I, I just had to keep in mind how to use the waste. Joe's food waste bowl is impressively empty. He used all his vegetable trimmings to make a soup stock. I'm thinking about cooking the gnocchi that uh, inside the broth. Wow. I, I'm not sure about that. I'm impressed. So far, so good. Did you hear? I heard that. I wonder. Zero waste. His bowl is empty. How's it going over here? I, I'll, I'll think of something. Joe has been cooking his broccoli for mm -hmm. at least about five minutes now. Oh, no. Yeah, so I'm really nervous whether it's going to be overcooked broccoli because mm -hmm. it has that mushy, disgusting taste. Yeah. I'm not happy with the way the sauce tastes, so I'm trying to think. Trying to think. <laughs> what I have around to make it taste the way I want. For her main dish, Shu Hao is making burgers. She's sprucing up her beef patties by mixing in ugly vegetables. Your chopping skills are fantastic. Really? You're doing a really good job making minced meats. I mean... <laughs> my arms are so tired. Your arms are tired? To get my son to eat vegetables, I would chop it up or shred it into really small pieces. I hide it in the, in the beef so he would eat it and he usually doesn't know any better. When it comes to vegetable peels, both of them are using the same method because air fried anything is good. Remember guys, clean plates, yes? 20 seconds. Joe used three ugly produce, carrots, potatoes, and spring onion. I really like the twill. The twill is smart, yes. yeah. I'm happy that he made the crisps. Yes, uh, I'm very happy with this. Crisps. Carrot. It's very flavorful. Mm -hmm. Chewiness from the gnocchi, and that sweetness from the carrot. However, I do think if he used a little bit of potato or even egg, it would have been a little bit softer. Yeah. Because now it's super dense. Overall, a solid dish. Hmm. Shu Hao has prepared a three-course meal. 
I am quite skeptical because the patty typically, I like it pure meat. It's really interesting that she put a bunch of vegetables in there. How many did she use? I think like six or seven. What were they? Apples, red yep. cabbage, mm -hmm. um, sweet potato. Yes. Uh, uh, wing beans. Wing beans. Spring onion. Spring onion. What else? Tomato. Tomato. And romaine lettuce. What? Seven, seven? versus Joe's three. It's juicy. Mm. It's so juicy. The vegetables have such beautiful textures in there. Wow. I'm gonna finish it off with the dessert, I think. <laughs> I will go the rice first and then the top tea, so. I think this is a perfect balance. Oh. Oh, it's nice and chewy. Mm. I think, honestly, creativity-wise, amazing. Welcome back, guys. We tasted your food. We were both, I think, very happy overall. I was really happy with Joe's. Really good job containing your food waste to almost zero for Shu Hao. Very impressed with your food. But we only have one, one winner. winner. Yes. Chef Priscilla, if you would like to do the honors. Yes. The winner of our zero waste cook-off is... <laughs> Shu I'm really surprised that my humble dish won. <laughs> uh, I found this whole journey very enriching. Simply having like this community of people normalize this kind of um, reduced waste behavior um, really helped me in my kitchen. Looking back at the whole uh, zero waste journey, now when I have some waste, I Google uh, what I can do with it, and there's always some things. And uh, throwing it away, it's not an option anymore. Can't finish the rice out. All our contenders went from zero to hero, so we should do the same. Wow. Look beyond the labeling. Keep. Go for the whole plant or animal, instead of something more convenient. Where would you like to After all, this is what we need to do to save Mother Earth. Feed people, oh, not bins. <laughs> <laughs>